What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games, and today we've got another very nice new character card to take a look at from the Transformers trading card game. The lovely folks on the official Facebook group have gone and shown us Captain Alita 1. And like so many of the character cards lately, firstly, it looks kind of fun and kind of interesting, and secondly, it's another specialist. It's a little bit weird. It's also the first Captain Alita we've actually seen in the game. So, what does it actually do? Well, it's a 12 cost. And firstly, 12 is expensive. But secondly, 12 means we could be playing so many other characters. It's two more than Grimlock. It's just in line with Nemesis Prime. I mean... It's only one less than Optimus Prime Battlefield Legend, so if we're going to have a 12 cost, we'd better have a pretty gosh darn good 12 cost. And the good news is, the stats here, yeah, the stats here are very good. Probably the headline here is 17 health. Alright, it's slightly below Autobot Cosmos. But the only one other than Autobot Cosmos, of, in terms of regular characters, that can match or beat this is Major Shockwave from Wave 3, which also comes in at 17 health, but then again also comes in at 14 stars, which is even more expensive. In terms of attack, we've got an attack of 5 or 6, which is pretty good. But we are rocking defense of zero. The stats are looking really good here until we remember that the defense is zero. So yes, it's expensive. Yes, the stats are good. And let's just not look at the defense. And then we can be happy again. So as with so many of these, it really is a skill that's going to make or break whether this is a good card. And we've got some nice ones. In bot mode... When this is KO'd, i.e. if it's KO'd while it's in bot mode, you scrap the top card of your deck, you may play it, but you don't have to. Then you scrap another card from the top of your deck, and you may play it, but you don't have to. It's literally Leap of Faith. And Leap of Faith, as I've said on a number of occasions, is not only a star card, meaning it takes one star of your 25 you can use to make your character deck, but it's my favourite of the star cards. It's a really good star card. So, yeah. This, this is, like, really, really nice. You get to play the top two cards of your deck. Now, I'm a huge fan of Field Communicator, and that lets you play the top card of your deck. This lets you play the top two. Of course, you're also a specialist here, so you can pop a Field Communicator down, play the top card of your deck. You then get KO'd while still in bot mode, and you play the next two cards of your deck. It's really quite fantastic. This is a really, really, really nice skill. Now, it is only when you're KO'd. Which initially looks quite bad. But it is KO'd. Doesn't say how, doesn't say from an opponent's attack or any of that. If it is KO'd in any way, shape or form. Which should therefore take us immediately to I Still Function. You see, I Still Function is a phenomenal card that leads to some phenomenal plays. Return one of your KO'd characters that has 12 stars or fewer to the battlefield, repair one damage from it, at the end of turn, KO it. Which means you can bring this back, and you'll, you will have been KO'd in bot mode. If you get KO'd in alt mode, something's going very, very wrong, you want to be KO'd in bot mode. You're KO'd in bot mode, you get to play the top two cards of your deck. And then you play I Still Function, you come back in bot mode. And then you get to play the top two cards of your deck when you get KO'd now. It's phenomenal, ladies and gentlemen. It turns I Still Function into a leap of faith. Except it's not a star card. Also, it doesn't have a white icon, I suppose. But that that's ridiculous. That is utterly, patently, over-the-top ridiculous. And it's going to make you want to play cards like Leap of Faith. Because if one of the cards you flip is a Leap of Faith, then you're essentially playing three cards rather than two. Or it's going to make you want to play a Bolt of Lightning to do loads of extra damage. Or even just Zap. 
Because if you can hit a couple of Zap, it's not far off a Bolt of Lightning, but it doesn't take a Star Card, and it's got an Orange Icon. Remember, if you want to do the extra cheeky damage with Zap, but you don't want the Orange Icon, you'd rather go blue, we have got Heavy Landing in a Devastator deck, which does the exact same thing with a blue icon. Technically, if your tower is 6 or above, it's actually better, but you, you ain't going to have a tower unless you're in a Devastator deck, so outside of a Devastator deck, it's just zap with a blue icon. Cool. And of course, maybe you hit that Field Communicator. Field Communicator, got a white icon, gives you plus one attack and lets you play the top card of your deck. So you attach Field Communicator, but then you go through your deck again and play the next card, which is pretty gosh darn cool. Or maybe you hit a multi-mission gear and you play multi-mission gear and then you get to play an extra action from your hand. Or you hit multi-tool and you attach it and then you get to play an extra tool from your hand. Now that you may play it is very important because you might draw a weapon, but all your characters have weapons on and you don't want to attach them, so you don't have to. You might draw something like a system reboot and not want to scrap your entire hand and draw four cards. So it's pretty important here that it is may rather than must. This lets you play extra cards. And honestly here, I could see an argument for actually playing this with bravery. Bravery is a utility that gives you brave. Meaning that if your enemies can attack, they must attack this. Unless, you know, they've got no choice. So for instance, if this isn't tapped but another character is, they would have to go after the tapped character. And the point of this very simply is, this forces your opponent to go after this, and then when it gets KO'd, you get to play the top two cards of your deck. But maybe you don't go Bravery, because either your opponent attacks it, and then you get to play the top two cards of your deck when it goes away, or they don't, and you're sitting there with a six attack character. Bearing in mind you've got 17 health, which means you're going to be on the field for a while. And while we're here, might I mention a card that I revealed the other day? Thank you very much to the lovely Transformers folks for letting me do so. It's Energy Pack. This character does have 11 stars or more. So you can play this, and then all of a sudden you've got 21 health, which is right up there with Autobot Cosmos. I love this skill. But it's also got an alt mode skill as well. When you flip to this mode, move any number of damage counters from one of your other characters to this, but not enough to KO her. Now that's really important, because this is basically a neutered version of Dinobot Sludge. Now Dinobot Sludge was far more specific, far more narrow in its application, but Dinobot Sludge, when you flip to alt mode, you can move any number of damage counters from your other Dinobots to Sludge. What that means is that Dinobot Sludge can only heal Dinobots, Alita can heal anything, but the thing is Dinobot Sludge doesn't have the you can't KO it thing, which means Dinobot Sludge can move 47 damage counters over, and then it gets KO because you check for a KO at the end, whereas Alita can move just enough damage counters to take it down to one health, but not enough to actually KO it. And weirdly enough, the reason we want to be able to KO it is because of I Still Function. One of the coolest things about Sludge is dropping an I Still Function, bringing it back with only one damage counter on, and then flipping it to alt mode to heal completely. It's cool, right? Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that is not an option that you have with Alita here. You can heal your characters, but you can't KO her. It's not as good as Sludge. It's still a fun ability. Just please do remember, if you move enough damage counters over when you're in alt mode, or when you flip to alt mode, you run the risk of being KO'd in alt mode, and you do not want to be KO'd in alt mode. Now, you are an Autobot leader here, which does mean you get access to Matrix of Leadership, which is kind of nice. Gives you plus one attack, and of course, it's got the double icon, which is nice. And each of your other characters has plus one attack and pierce one. 
So that's kind of cool. You're a specialist, which gives you field communicator, multi-tool, and multi-mission gear, all of which we have previously spoken about. And then you are a car. We seem to have looked at a few cars lately, including Chromia just earlier today. But it gives you turbo boosters, plus one attack, untap whatever you pop it into. Start your engines which flips all of your characters at Arakar into car mode and untaps one of them. That's really good because you can play start your engines, get yourself into car mode, and then use your flip for the turn to get yourself back into bot mode. So if you do get KO'd, you're KO'd in bot mode. And then, of course, in Wave 2, we had bumpers, which stops your opponent moving damage counters onto it, which is pretty important. For your opponent trying to move damage counters and KO it. But I need to point out here. Bumpers reads. Put on cars only. Damage counters can't be moved from other characters to the upgraded character. So if you put a bumpers onto Captain Alita. And then you get into bot mode. And then you flip back into alt mode. You cannot use the skill. Because the skill moves damage counters. And Bumpers doesn't say damage counters can't be moved from your opponent's characters. No, it says other characters. If you put a Bumpers onto Captain Alita and then flip it back into old mode later, you don't get to use the skill. Bumpers will actually block you using your own skill. It's a little bit weird, but I did think it important to point that out at the end of this video. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, a very, very expensive character with really good stats, except for defense, and at least one really good skill, possibly two. But the biggest issue with Captain Alita is the one that I pointed out right at the start of the video. We have got other really good characters that cost about this amount, and I don't know if you're going to be playing Captain Alita over them. But I would very much like to know if you think you're going to be going to. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where we talk about games like Transformers and a whole bunch of others. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Ross, and you've been watching Wossy Plays.